<laughs> right. Please do not make any recordings until I, the chair, declare the meeting open. Um, I've just got to say a few things. Fire alarm. In the event that the fire alarm sounds, please make your way to the nearest fire exit and follow the instruction of officers and fire marshals. Assembly point is across the car park. Smoking is not permitted in MS or a buildings. Toilets are located further along this corridor on the opposite side with signs clearly marking each door. If you require the use of these facilities, please respect the conduct of business and return to the room without delay. Should you be requested to leave the meeting for any reason other than an emergency, you will be required to switch off any recording equipment and leave the meeting with all your belongings. Um, anyone here with items relating to personal, private, confidential or exempt information, please ensure that the items are not on display until such time that they may be required. Um, members will be aware that proceedings of the meeting may be recorded. And if any observers have any objections to being recorded, then I have to offer you the opportunity to leave the meeting. And please switch off mobile phones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Councillor Denise Roberts, Chair of this meeting, and I now declare this meeting open. Recordings may now commence. Okay. Um, do we have any apologies? <coughs> we have two. Uh, members, Chair, who are no longer on the authority, Councillor Kelly and Councillor Robertson. Councillor Rennie is here as a substitute for Councillor Robertson on this occasion until the AGM. Thank you. Um, are there any declarations of interest in relation to any item? I'm just going to ask, can you all hear me? Yes. <coughs> exclusion of the press and public due to the disclosure of exempt information. So we move on now to the minutes of our last meeting held on the 31st of July. Are members happy that this is a correct record? Right, we move on now to agenda item three, <coughs> audit update. Um, are you going to start off, Kieran, or yes, do you want to come straight in? Very, very briefly, please. Yes. Uh, just uh, I'll hand over to, to Grant Thornton in a moment. We've got uh, uh, Mike Thomas and Paul Basnett here. And I think we'd all be aware, but just to remind you, Mike's taken over from Robin Baker as our district auditor. Um, a very experienced auditor, amongst other things, and the, the audit on Liverpool in recent years. And, uh, um, I'll hand over to them with, without further ado. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Chair. And uh, we have uh, three reports for the uh, the uh, audit committee uh, this afternoon. And I'll just go through them individually and they ask questions uh, at any time as you, as you wish. The, uh, the first report I'm going to go through is the, the audit plan. And um, 
just to summarise our responsibilities for the audit plan, we, uh, as you know, we have to give an opinion on the, the accounts of the Sapphire Authority, and we also have to give a, a, what we call a value for money conclusion, saying that you have arrangements in place to secure economy efficiency and effectiveness. And this plan sets out how we're going to achieve both of those uh, key objectives. Um, the plan is, is divided into a number of different sections. Um, the most important is sections one and two, which look at how we, how we understand the work that you do and how developments that are taking place affect uh, the work of the fire policy. And it's very clear that the, the financial challenge that you face is severe. And we'll be looking at the, the, um, the savings and efficiency plans that you have and put in place and the progress towards delivering those. Also on the agenda is the, club, the collaboration that you have with, with Merseyside uh, Police and Crime Commissioner and um, the opening of the Joint Command and Control Centre which has been a, yeah, a, tra <coughs> a transformation in the way you um, provide communication and you, and you launch your, 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 your vehicles. That will fall into our value for money work. Um, moving through the plan, uh, the, there's a, a very interesting diagram in section 3 which summarises our audit approach. Um, the, in the bottom corner you'll see um, an image of the world and uh, what looks like a hammer and sickle on it. Um, <laughs> it it's, that's the logo of, uh, of our software that we use, which is called Voyager. <coughs> yeah, unfortunately I don't have a page numbers for, uh, for, you, for your agenda, but it, it's section three of, uh, of, of, our, of our plan. Um, the, uh, Pages 39 and uh, 40 and 41 talk, talk about the risks that we've uh, been, been looking at as part of our work. We look at um, the way income is recognised by the, by the authority, the way um, expenses are, are controlled and paid. The majority of the expenditure that you have is, is obviously on your employees, and we look at the controls in place over making sure that that expenditure is, um, is accurately recorded in your accounts. Section 6 of the, the plan, which is on page uh, 42, talks about our responsibilities for value for money. And we, the criteria that we work to is set by the Audit Commission uh, before abolition. Uh, post abolition, it would be by the Public Sector Audit Appointments uh, Body and the NAO. Um, the arrangements cover financial resilience. <coughs> Have you got the money to pay uh, for, for your expenses going forward? And economy, efficiency and effectiveness. What arrangements do you have in place to ensure that uh, you challenge uh, the way you do things and you deliver your efficiency plans and the way you work together with your, your blue light, uh, light partners? Um, we also consider the, the work carried out by internal audits and then we will we'll go through that later in, in the agenda. Uh, from our point of view, the work of its audit hasn't identified anything that would have a significant impact on our responsibilities, and, and that's a good outcome. Um, section 8 of the um, plan looks at the key dates that we work to. The, the most important date is that you prepare the accounts uh, by the end of June, and then we start work on our opinion in, in earnest. And our aim is to, is to provide you with an opinion on your accounts before the 30th of September, which is the statutory uh, uh, deadline date. Uh, section 9 of the plan gives a fee uh, for 14.15, which is 43,232. Uh, the good news is that fee is going to be reduced um, to 15.16 by 25%. Uh, Mike and I would love to take credit for it, but unfortunately we can't. It's, uh, it's set by the Audit Commission before they were abolished. Um, so I'll stop there on the audit plan, and if there's any questions, Chair, um, please uh, fire away. Any questions or comments from members? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll just hand over. Sorry, Chair. I'll, I'll just hand over to Mike now, who will, who will take you through the, the update report. Okay, Chair. As um, Kim said, Mike, Mike Thomas, I, um, as well as auditing yourselves, I also audit one of the ship. Fire and Rescue Authority um, and previously uh, a couple of others in the past. Taking over from Robin, because Robin is uh, Robin Baker was um, 
euros for seven years, so there's a rotation that necessarily needs to take place. I'll just take you quickly through the uh, audit update report, which starts on your page three. And essentially, it's a, hopefully a format that you've seen before. So on page six, just gives you some very high-level background to um, some of the... Okay, sorry. We've jumped about a bit. We yeah. have. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All the exuberance moved us through the agenda, so I'll just bring you back to... to We've got page, uh, page six, yeah? Yes. Okay, so Paul's plan was uh, talking about the fourteen fifteen plan, which is the year, obviously, we're, we're in all it's in, and then this report just sort of updates where we are against that plan, plus gives you some background to some of the other reports that we and, and others have uh, done in the recent past, just for your, mainly for information, but for, just for flagging up. So on page six, flagging up some of the reports we've recently done in, the local government and uh, the fire sector um, and, and sort of more broadly across the piece. It moves on to page seven to, to where we are against the plan. So the actual plan itself has come to you. The interim accounts audit visit is, is complete uh, and the final accounts audit visit, it, it says, is on track. So that, that's not due until later in the year once you produce your accounts. And similarly over the page on page eight, the value for money work is as Paul described, the content of it is uh, is not due to begin really until the next couple of months, and we finalise that into September when we complete our complete our work. So that's just a very high level where we are against the plan. Uh, so it's all on track, and then the rest of the documents is, is some of those reports. One that we've recently released called Cruise Control, which I think has been sent to to officers and circulated and is available on the website. And this page just gives a sort of high level message of the challenges within that and the changes that Paul alluded to uh, that, that are taking place within, within the fire service generally and some of those challenges are set out in the report with some key messages. And over the page, <coughs> again, the sort of theme of this sort of the plan itself and the value for money around collaboration uh, and focusing on the sick end night report. And then moving through a wider context review on governance. Uh, where, piece that was done in local government, which looked at governance within the organisation, working with others and partners, uh, and then how you um, work with your stakeholders, and that can be a range of different people to, to ensure your governance is at the highest standards. And then probably a few reports, then just more for um, information as much as of any other significance. So flagging up the independent commission into local government finance, uh, the inspection of Rotherham Council and some of the issues coming out of that for consideration, introduction of pension boards in local government and, and the fire sector, uh, and a specific accounting and auditing issue on the calculation of policy pay. And finally, over the page, uh, issues around the area closure of accounts, so uh, as they've done in uh, other sectors now starting to come even earlier in, in terms of when you need to produce your accounts by when we need to audit them and buy. So generally moving forward by about a month uh, through to sort of 31st of July in 2018. And that piece at the end is really just how we can work with you uh, to, to make sure that we all meet the deadline on time. So I'm happy to take any questions on any of the individual pieces or say a bit more about any of them, would it? Just sort of, uh, that was just a sort of high level overview. Questions from members? Thank you, Chair. Um, can I just ask a question on page 13, um, which is obviously relating to the Rotherham Council, and the very last sentence really where it's talking about members being briefed on lessons learned. I mean, what would you be looking for us to provide as hard evidence that, in fact, yes, we have looked at this? Clearly, we have um, you know, strategy days and we have our learned yeah. lunches. What sort of information will, would satisfy you that we're actually you know, looking at those and challenging and scrutinising the I think, I I think some of those things you've said, Councillor, uh, in terms of actually, the, we're flagging these up so the things to bring to you, your attention. So the fact that you probably have briefings on them and what the issues are, and then you need to take them away. And if there are actions for the fire authority, then certainly be thinking about them. Um, 
but in, in the first instance, it's, it's a sort of awareness, awareness raising and a sort of action planning on, on the back of that. Uh, it sounds from what you're saying, we have been briefed on and that, that sort of is in process, whether that's as part of this body or sort of some council bodies. Um, I mean, we would expect within you know, sort of net councils then, that they would have been brought to the attention of all members and, and an action plan properly formulated. Yeah, I just to answer that, I'd say if you did, if you had identified that there's a risk here, we, we would the evidence that you talk about would be an entry in the risk register mm -hmm. and the mitigate actions to, to correct it. Thank you. Okay, have we finished? No, finally, Chair, we, we have one that finally oh, yes. oh, <laughs> I'll look at the members, not the oh, <laughs> <laughs> The third report is the, uh, the risk assessment, which we, we do each year. And uh, under international audit standards, we, we are required to ask management um, about the arrangements that you, as an organisation, have in place to uh, prevent and detect fraud, compliance with the laws and regulations, and satisfy yourself as to the ongoing financial um, stability of the organisation, the going concern uh, concept. Is this at page 19? <laughs> It's on page 19 onwards. <laughs> the, um, the report is broken down into those various sections, um, and you'll see um, on page uh, 23 the fraud section, and page 24 and 25 has the series of questions and the <coughs> response chaired by, by the management of, of the authority. Um, and um, this, this questions and answers are brought to, to your attention for your comments uh, as, as to the, the answers that have been made. And the answers cover all the questions that have been, been made and there's, there's no issues within the report that we've identified that causes us a, us a, a problem. Um, look at the laws of re um, regulations. You don't need me to tell you that you have a valuable support of a, of a qualified solicitor who provides you with um, detailed legal support and um, that gives you that resilience there. Uh, moving on to financial reporting considerations on, on, on page 29. There's a, a series of questions here regarding significant financial transactions and the, the process, processes that are in place. There's been no change from previous years and the arrangements uh, yeah, are satisfactory from a financial reporting point of view. The, the final section of this report on page 13 and 31 looks forward, uh, look, it's called the Going Concern uh, concept and this looks at your financial resilience going forward. Uh, the financial stability is a challenge for all fire authorities given the reductions in, in grant funding. There's no concerns that we have regarding the going concern uh, of the organisation. This is supported by the management response which uh, identifies the rolling five-year forecast that you have in the financial plans and the IIMP going forward. So we're bringing this information uh, for your information, Chair, and any, any sort of comments or questions that you, you wish, wish to raise. Thank you. Any questions? That's it. That's it, Maybe yeah. <laughs> just a comment, Chair, yeah, yeah. just um, around, the, um, uh, around the financial viability going forward. Uh, I think you know, that's a question that's been posed to all fire and rescue authorities at the end. And I, I'd say it wouldn't be an absolute positive yes from every fire and rescue authority because a, a number are facing up to very significant financial challenges and you know, certainly um, facing compulsory redundancy for firefighters and, and issues like that. Um, and uh, I suppose that's one to keep a, a, a very close eye on as, as we head up to the, the next round of cuts. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much. Now so moving on to agenda item four on page forty-nine. We've got the internal report. <coughs> 
Do you want to start us yes, off? Yes, I'll start us off, Chair. I think the, you know, the, the, the cumulative agenda here, I suppose, is building up a picture of the, the assurance framework we've got in place around external audit, internal audit, and so on, leading up to the, the government statement, which is later on the agenda. And this report deals specifically with the internal audit arrangements that were in place during the year and a, a summary of the, um, uh, the, the work that was undertaken. And uh, I suppose if I, if I jump straight to the, the highlight on page 50, um, I suppose it's um, that Melanie's been in a position to, to make the statement that uh, it's in our opinion that we can provide substantial assurance to the system of internal <coughs> control in place at Merseyside Fire Rescue Service for the year ended, accords with proper practice, um, fundamental systems audits have shown a substantial level of compliance, and none of the audits have identified weaknesses that have required a corporate impact assessment of major or moderate. Based on the audit work carried out in 2014-15, we are not aware of any significant control weaknesses within the service which impact on the annual government statement, which um, all, all sounds a bit dry, but it's a, 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 a rosy thumbs up for, for, from an internal audit point yes. of view. And then the, the appendix or appendices to the report deal in more detail with the, the reports that have taken place through the year. Um, as you'd imagine, most of them have been around the core financial systems and uh, the, the scoring around the control environment, environment and compliance has been to, to a high standard on the, on, the, on the vast majority of those. Um, the, um, a number of other sort of specific audits that have taken place, and there is there's more detail um, given around um, the, the results that have come out from those. And uh, in the appendix B, there is even more detail around the, the outcomes of the individual audits. Um, should, should you wish to delve, delve into that into, in, into more detail, um, probably best of all just stop there. And, and, unless did you want to say anything specifically, Melanie? Um, I suppose really, Chair, on page 50 where it talks about the financial implications, um, I don't suppose there's likely to be a 25% decrease for the year. Least I asked. Okay, thank you. I think it's, in terms of value for money for a internal audit service, it is something we keep a, a close eye on. And uh, we, have, we have a healthy debate in house about um, appropriate arrangements for tempering and so on, because obviously it's is provided by another local authority at present, and you know, Liverpool have been long standing auditors. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to keep an eye on whether or not we were getting value for money in the broadest sense, not just about price, but about quality and so on. So we certainly had a healthy debate in house, which uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so. Chair, can I just ask, just a bit there, uh, points of clarification around that. Um, does myself and uh, Council Roberts have to declare an interest? My advice would be um, that, that there's some other personal interest there, but nothing prejudicial, unless you consider it's a prejudicial interest. Right. Well, just to be on the safe side, I'll declare. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, thank you. Councillor Brennan has, I suppose, I guess, as well. Yeah. Better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. 
think it would be fair to say that the, uh, the, the key financial systems audits tend to run fairly smoothly because they're a, you know, a, a well-old machine, I suppose, and it's, it's where we're looking at other areas of the business. And perhaps on, on occasion, if, if we hold our hands up, we probably haven't scoped the work as well as we might, or equally some of the, the managers who are involved in the work haven't got the, the, the time planned out as, as, as best they might to be ready to assist Melanie in a speedy fashion. And that's something that we're, we're looking at. And uh, as a, a management team, we've asked Melanie to come to the, the meeting in September um, to talk about um, how they, they add value around some of those, not peripheral, but you know, outside the core financial systems, um, and how we can do that better. So we've set in place a, a meeting to try and start addressing that. I've come across a situation before where um, uh, there's a difference between a, an aspiration and a target. The actual last year was 60%, and this year it was 64. Would it be more reasonable to set a target of 70%, say, or 65? Yeah, so or, or, or would that be? I think it. Down too much? That, that might well be the outcome from September's meeting. I, th I think perhaps, perhaps if we if, if we review the target a bit, if that's agreeable to, to members in the light of the, the meeting that we wanted to, to take place, just to pick up the performance on those. As you're quite right, you said something realistic. Okay. We um, note the contents of the report. Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to the annual governance statement, um, starting on page 85. This is a bit like the, uh, the, the three ships arriving in the docks, isn't it? You've got the, the two build-up reports. <laughs> now here comes the, the culmination of all the excitement. And, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the annual government state, um, you know, it, it is a very dry document, but it's, it is our chance as a management team in the broader sense um, to, to sit down, you know, officers, members, and uh, you know, sit back and reflect on the year and say, well, are we happy? But in, in, in the broadest terms, our governance arrangements are you know, robust and working as they, they, they should. And uh, what we try and do is set all of that out in a single, relatively short document, I suppose, following best practice. And you know, that sets out the, the governance framework, you know, things like our IRMP, our mission statements and so on. Um, the policy and decision-making process, uh, the management structure, policies, procedures and regulations that you approve on an annual basis as an authority, the internal audit function, risk management, uh, financial management, so lots of the things that come to the, this committee. And then it reviews the effectiveness in each of those areas, on sort of pages 94, 95 and, and so on. And then on page 97, I suppose we're a bit more sort of forward looking around some of the, uh, the key governance issues that we, we, we face at the moment. Um, and really, the, Coming back to what uh, Mike and Paul were saying about financial issues and uh, the pressures on the public sector in general, you know, they're, they're definitely reflected there. Um, so that's a summary of the, um, the report that's there. You know, following on from the two reports you've had already, um, as you'd expect, the, the conclusion is that broadly um, we think the control arrangements are robust and are working as, as they should do. Um, and the, the statement says that, so the recommendation that you're, you're asked to approve, if, if you agree, is that um, you approve the annual government statement and ask um, Denise to sign that on, on behalf of the authority. And um, we've almost covered the, the second part already because attached to this was actually the, the management response to the, um, uh, the, the paper from Grant Thornton on informing their risk assessment. And uh, you know, Paul's already been through, through you know, the answers that management had given to those questions. And the second thing we're asking to do is just as, a, um, as the, the leadership of the authority just confirm that you're happy with the answers that we've given as a management team to those, those questions. Um, I'll stop there, Chair. Thank you. Um, do you want to ask questions or make comments? Page 97, uh, 4.9.1. Uh, 
I mean, to you, you know, we're talking about um, the prospect of considering the merger of a number of fire stations which were clearly um, heading towards, and that's a decision for the FRT, obviously, later on, and um, probably so in June, isn't it, we're going to make that final decision. Could you perhaps just go over some of the implications for the authority, um, just so it's out there in the public arena once again, as to what may be some of the implications if we weren't to go ahead um, with mergers? Clearly, you know, we've yet to see the consultation, and we'll all be obviously reading that and, and taking note of, of what's said in that. But just to spell out, um, as I say, what implications that would clearly have on our. Uh, significant governance, governance issues if in fact that didn't go ahead. Yeah, just pick up on that um, as, as, as briefly as I can. I suppose we're all aware of the significant cuts in, in government funding as the government responds to the austerity agenda and uh, balancing the books and so on. Um, and that's been, we've had to make significant savings in the, the fire authority budget. Um, we all know that the, the fire authority budget mm -hmm. is mainly people. And of the, those mainly the people, they are mainly the costs are around firefighters. So as the, the budget reduces, that reduces the ability for the number of firefighters that we can employ as an organisation effectively um, if, in order to, to, to balance the books. Um, I suppose we've planned well in terms of people terms in, in managing that situation, in that we recognise that we would have to reduce the number of staff, and we're using natural retirement rates of firefighters to achieve that by having built up reserves in the past and using a, a strategy around that. <coughs> and in cash terms, we are in, on target in terms of delivering the savings we need to as firefighters are leaving the organisation through natural retirement rates. But what that means in, in practical terms is that as firefighters leave, we can no longer staff all 26 fire engines that we're now down to. Um, so increasingly, fire appliances are, are going off the run on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, to address that in the medium term, we've got a strategy of uh, three station mergers and one closure. Um, the one closure has, has been approved already, and one merger is progressing over at Prescott um, after public consultation uh, and, uh, and so on. And um, th those uh, uh, pro projects, particularly Prescott, is moving through the planning process and so on, and Allerton has already been closed. Um, as you'll be aware, there are two further station mergers. Uh, the Wirral consultation, which closed yesterday, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, the results of the public consultation will be reported back shortly to the, the Fire Authority to make a decision about that merger. And uh, we would hope in the near future to be kicking off the, the uh, public consultation around the merger of St. Helens. Um, and I suppose in very brief summary, that's, that's the position we're in, is that the, the number of firefighters has reduced below the level where we're able to crew all the current appliances so they're going to have to run on a more regular basis. And because building new fire stations is a two-year progress process, um, that is going to have knock-on implications over the next couple of years until those new stations, subject to the consultations and uh, approvals of the authority, are built. On to item six, We've had the uh, three ships chair now, it's the, uh, the fireworks and the lights display. Absolutely. Um, the Treasury Management Annual Report. Um, you'll recall that each year as part of the budget we set a, a Treasury Management Annual Strategy and um, it's best practice to report on that once during the year and once at the year end. And this report is just reporting back on uh, progress against the strategy and uh, in essence all of the rules that you set in terms of 
uh, the balance between fixed and variable rate debt, the age profile of debt, and the where places we should invest, and so on. Uh, we stuck to them all during the year, so it's, it's a very straightforward report. And uh, you've got a, a couple of tables in there. On page 115, you can see that um, our debt overall reduced slightly during the year as we repaid uh, a couple of old, old, older loans. So it went down to 43.6 million to 42.1 million. Um, on page 116, um, you've got uh, a profile of the, the level of investments during the year. And you can see that particularly around about July time when we get a significant pensions grant from the government, uh, the investments go up to a very high level indeed. And uh, around about July, we had up to, up to about 38 million pounds on any particular day uh, invested. Um, but that varies quite significantly dependent on the, the cash flow position uh, across the year. And we finished the, the year with um, £17 million pounds worth of investments invested in about 10 different organisations so that the risk was spread across uh, a, a fairly significant profile. Um, the income we earned on our investments was um, £253,000, pounds, which you know, reflects the low level of interest rates at present, um, uh, but was higher than the level we did originally budgeted for um, because of partly management and partly because of the, the level of uh, investments being slightly higher than we expected. Um, I'll stop there, Chair. The, the appendix gives a few more details around that. Perhaps take any questions. Again, again, Chair, I mean, just for uh, confirmation, really, can you confirm as well that we uh, have no money loaned out to other local authorities? <coughs> yes, Chair. We, 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 we currently don't have any money loaned out to other authorities. Else? Uh, as part of the strategy, what's the lowest credit rating of an institution that we're willing to invest in? Um, it, it, it's quite a complex set of, uh, of rules. Um, it's A minus um, according to the, the different ratings, but um, it, it, it's a little bit more complicated than that because we do invest in building societies who don't have credit ratings and, and those sorts of things. So I'm happy to supply a, a full list of the, the rules around it and the. I suppose more, more importantly, that the specific limits we put around each type of organisation so that we wouldn't place more than, um, say, um, four million pounds with part nationalised UK banks, uh, three million with money market funds, uh, but the limit for money market funds is AAA rated. Um, UK banks and building societies, it's A minus or, or, or higher rated, and that's two million. And for foreign banks registered in the UK, you'll probably see um, Handel's Bank in there as, as one example. Uh, the limit is two million pounds, and they've got to be A or higher rated for, uh, for foreign banks. That's a that's a, a very quick summary, but there's a little bit more detail beneath that. So um, we're asked to note the report. Members happy to do that? Mm -hmm. okay. Item seven uh, on page on page one hundred and twenty three. I think I've run out of analogies with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just the, the draft annual inter, uh, the internal audit plan. Um, as ever, internal audit, uh, its key focus is around the fundamental financial systems that underpin the, the authorities' work. Um, and uh, you know, the, the summary of the work that's used to be able to take 112 days in a year, so um, a bit less than a full time. Uh, Government person is on page 128, but the um, ad hoc reviews that we were hoping to, to have a look at are particularly around those areas of the organisation where there is new work or a change way of working. So around the, um, we've got a new uh, fleet management system in place, so there's bought some work proposed around that and around how that feeds into the asset management plan. Uh, we've got the new firefighters pension scheme coming, which has just started, and so some work to look at the administration arrangements around that and make sure they're robust. Um, strategic management review, workforce planning, key issue as uh, Councillor already just uh, identified already. Um, the FM contract, that's the facilities management contract, you'll recall that we've put out one single contract for all of the uh, facilities management work, whereas we used to contract out with over 20 different organisations, so it's rationalising into, into a single pot, and uh, just have a look at that and make sure that we're managing that, which is quite a big contract now, quite, quite robustly. And finally, the financial management system, um, phase two. Um, the key bits, payroll, accounting, and so on, can set in place. But there is work to uh, expand some of the um, subsidiary HR systems, particularly across the organisation, 
and uh, Melanie's team will be looking at that uh, across the year. Um, there's a three year plan set out on page 131, which gives an idea of, of coverage, covering all the systems in a strategic way. Um, happy to take any questions, Chair. Yeah. Possibly speak up, please, because I can't hear you. Thank you very much. Perhaps the other thing just to add to that is the, the 64 figure is probably just a slightly higher figure in this year because we have been putting in new financial systems so there's been a bit more of a, a, a going over those systems than that you'd normally have once they're in steady state and you know, you're just checking that the controls continue to be robust. Thanks, Chair. You've got the, um, the, the colour coded um, uh, register in the, in the format of the, the appendix, which obviously um, picks out the key risks, the arrangements that are in place to manage those risks, and the, uh, the mitigated risk of those management arrangements. Um, but I suppose the, the key things to flag up are that there are um, three um, additional risks um, that have been added to the, 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 um, the register. Um, first, um, I think, is around the station change programme. Um, we recognise that there is a significant risk around there, particularly around uh, working with partners, trying to get them to make decisions in the same time scale that we love them to, um, and then coordinating all of that work across two, three, or even more organisations 